Mimi, I hope you've been wearing your sunscreen. <laughs> Drugstore sunscreens coming up. Hi guys, it's Jules and in today's video we are going to run down some of the sunscreens that are available at the drugstore. So as we know, the sun, so important, so warm, literally our earth revolves around it. We get vitamin D, we get sunshine, but wait, its effects are so harmful and honestly, we need to enjoy it, but we need to really protect ourselves when we go in it. That is the dark side. One of the number one most aging things is going in the sun without proper sun protection. You need to make sure that you have a few good sunscreens in your arsenal because this needs to be a daily habit that is part of your routine. It is something you do every day. We're gonna go through some of the terminology and give you some information and give you some resources as well as run down some of the ones I was able to find in my local drugstore. That starts now. Why is sunscreen so important? We need to protect ourselves from the harmful rays. The sun can cause cancer, the sun causes aging, the sun causes discoloration and age spots, all of these things that contribute to a more aged face. If we take the time and the care and we implement a good sunscreen routine, we can really help mitigate all of the risks of all of these things. I know, I know, sunscreen is so unsexy. Nobody wants to do it and in the past it has been such a thick and gloppy and white mess. And so really nobody's that jazzed to wear it, but sunscreens have come a long way and you know, the drugstore isn't fully there yet, but there are a few options that are available that are good options. There's some here that are really good recommendations, and then there's some that aren't so hot. There are a lot of sunscreens on the market. Not all of them are available at the drugstores, especially the ones that I personally use and recommend. If you would like to see a video on that, please let me know and I'll be happy to do that for you. We can definitely run through some sunscreens that are available online and some that are a little bit more higher end. Don't despair, there are some here that are good. Let's go through some of the basic info, common questions and common concerns. What is SPF? It is a sun protection factor and it is the number that will show you how much a sunscreen will protect you from the sun's rays. So for example, an SPF rating of 30 means that it will take 30 times as long to burn than if you had no sunscreen on at all. And that's a lot, but you do need to reapply. Dermatologists recommend that you reapply every couple of hours. Even if we are sitting inside with windows or sitting in a shaded area, don't be fooled. That still means you are getting some of the sun's rays. They are everywhere. You will not get them obviously as intensely if you are sitting in the sun, but it is still a factor. You always need to be wearing sunscreen. So another important factor with sunscreen is that you're going to need to apply 20 to 30 minutes before you are actually going to be in the sun. It needs time to set down so that it can fully protect you when you go in the sun. Everybody's skin type is different. As we covered in the first two drugstore product videos, both cleansers and moisturizers, it is really important that you understand your skin type and how your skin responds to different chemicals and ingredients in an inky list. Especially with sunscreen, it will take some trial and error before you can narrow down what your ideal sunscreen is. I will link in the description box below three sites that are very helpful in deciphering ingredient lists. That way you can research and figure out which products and which ingredients work best for you and your skin. So I'm not gonna cover all the ingredients here, but as a general rundown, the harmful ingredient that we're looking to stay away from is oxybenzone. This is a pretty toxic product. It is an older ingredient that still exists in some products, 
but it's probably a good idea to generally stay away from it. In the North American market, there are generally two types of sunscreen. Physical, also known as mineral, or chemical and there are a few that are a little bit of a hybrid that have a combination of both. Physical slash mineral sunscreens sit on top of your skin and they block the sun's rays. These formulations are generally better for people with allergies or sensitivities to products. Another advantage of physical slash mineral sunscreen is that it basically is a more complete sunblock. It will block both UVA and UVB rays completely. Chemical sunscreens, you rub them into your skin, they get absorbed by your skin and they work by absorbing the sun's rays and that is how they mitigate sun damage. The advantages of a chemical sunscreen are that they are usually thinner and have less of a white cast. The jury is out on whether chemical sunscreens get absorbed into your bloodstream and whether they are hazardous to your health. The ingredient mentioned earlier, oxybenzone, is one of those controversial ingredients that you should really try and avoid in your sunscreens. Another disadvantage of a chemical sunscreen is that it does not completely block all UVA and UVB rays. The ones that will be a more complete cover will be marked as broad spectrum sunscreens. So another factor that you need to consider is am I applying the right amount? The proper amount will be a full tablespoon for your face. What are we looking for in a sunscreen? From a formula point of view, I think what we're trying to achieve with sunscreen is a balance between ease of use as well as being effective and as least white cast as possible. I think that those are generally the things that people look for in a sunscreen. Of course, skincare is always individual. What you look for and your preferences are individual, so there will be nothing as effective as trial and error. Which sunscreens work for you and which ones do not? We're going to get into the sunscreens now. Everything I talk about is linked in the description box below. Please refer to that for more information. There were also some sunscreens that I have used in the past that I also had good experience with that I could not get a hold of. There's presently some COVID restrictions that means that there are some shortages as well as delivery issues and so I definitely will link those in the description box as well. I have a selection here. It is not the most comprehensive selection, but again, it is enough that you definitely, if you need to run to the drugstore, these have you covered. So I'm gonna start with two chemical sunscreens that have worked really well for me. I'm gonna start with the mineral sunscreens. Two are not tinted and two are tinted. We will start with the Aveeno Sensitive Skin. This one has an SPF of 50. This is a mineral sunscreen that is lightweight, dry sheer on the skin and is sweat and water resistant up to 80 minutes. So these are all really good claims. I will do a future sunscreen test where I will do a rundown of different sunscreens and how they hold up in different conditions. I find this one is really good. I would highly recommend it. It is a good all-purpose sunscreen for people with sensitive skin. This one is the Umbrel. This one is a 60 SPF and it is ultra light weightless sunscreen it's 100% mineral sunscreen as well. This one is very light. This one feels a lot like a chemical sunscreen but it is a mineral sunscreen. This one will be definitely a good one for a lot of different people. I highly recommend this one as well. The next two are the tinted mineral sunscreens. This one is the Aven. This one does have a very light to sheer tinted coverage. This one is a mineral sunscreen, but again, this is pretty thin in consistency, so it plays really well under makeup. And because it is lightly tinted, the white cast will be less of an issue. And this one is the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen. It is an SPF of 50. This one also does have a very light tint. This one also has a slight white cast, but the tint in it does help mitigate that. This one is a good compromise between a thicker and a more viscous sunscreen. This one is a little thicker in consistency, but it does rub in really well. With all of these mineral sunscreens, I would suggest that you rub them in and definitely give it a few minutes to set down before you put anything else over it like makeup. These two next sunscreens are chemical sunscreens. This one is La Roche-Posay. This one is the Anthelios 50 Plus. This one is ultra fluid 
invisible finish and that is really as close to a sunscreen that you will find that will really rub in and after it sets down it is a very very smooth finish and does not interfere with makeup coverage and then there's this one which is the umbrella ultra light advanced sunscreen this is the weightless face lotion in SPF 30. This one is also very thin and does dry down very well. So one caveat, there is a 3% oxybenzone. It is the last ingredient on the Inky Deck. So you do need to be aware that it is in this product in a very small percentage. So please be aware if you're going to use it. So these three last ones, I will definitely link them, but these ones use with caution. One is a mineral, one is a chemical, and one is a hybrid, but they have intense white cast, which basically means if you're gonna put some on your face and go save someone like in Baywatch, and that's the look that you're going for, I would try and steer clear of these. They're okay if you really have the time to really rub them into your skin, or if you're super pale or you're Asian and you wanna look paler, these will work well for you. Otherwise, use with caution. Back in the day, I know the popular thing was to go and sunbathe and be a sun worshiper to be a sun goddess that was the standard in the 70s and 80s a bronzed and tan body was the north american aesthetic i am really happy that there is definitely a more varied idea of what beauty is i think that you can achieve the same look with self tanners and with some amazing bronzers that are on the market we no longer need to sit in the sun without sunscreen because we are going to look older faster Let's not do that. Let's make sure we're smart with the sun, smart with the sunscreen. We definitely can still go outside, but let's just make sure that we're properly protected. It's super important. If we want to look better, longer, it's really important. That wraps up our drugstore skincare basics. Please let me know what sunscreens you guys use and which ones are your favorite or your daily must-haves. Leave them in the comments and please like and share with anybody that would like this. And I would love it if you would subscribe and hit that notification bell for more great video content. And I will see you next time. Does this have a white cast? <laughs> I feel like Robin Williams in Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> I have regrets. <laughs>